set up. And here we go. Good evening, good evening, good evening. I'd like to welcome one and all to Iron Sharpens Iron, our weekly Monday night Bible study. I'm Minister Clarissa Dowdell, and I am very, very excited. I have a guest with me tonight, um, uh, an esteemed colleague of mine from New York, uh, from the knows the old me, the coming up me before I got to this level. So I'm so happy and I'm, I'm honored that he uh, agreed to join me on tonight. Um, this is uh, Assistant Pastor Prophet Anthony Johnson from Oil of Joy Ministries. How are you, Prophet? God bless you. I'm well in yourself. How are you, my sister? I'm good, good, good to see you. Those of you who know, know I've moved from New York. So that's why a lot of people you see me with are, are from New York, the people that have uh, been there with me. So we're going to get going on tonight. And what we're going to talk about, I want to talk about something interesting. Because, you know, one thing I don't want to just get in here and cover names and dates. And that's that's not what Iron Sharpens Iron is about. It's about uh, explaining and having an interchange with each other so we can understand new levels of the word and of ministry. So what I wanted to talk about tonight, I know last week I covered about going to church and how necessary church is. So what I want to talk about tonight is I want to talk about when you're anointed, how you still need to study and be trained, you need time before you go into action, before you go and begin to do things in ministry, before you are released into ministry to do certain things. So tonight we're gonna to talk about the balance uh, between being anointed, but also having to, to study. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Our theme scripture for tonight is going to be 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. It's a very familiar scripture. Once I start reading it, you'll, you'll know you've heard it before. And it's very brief. And it simply says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about studying to show yourself approved, because the whole point of studying is it's meant to be a complement and an enhancement to your anointing. Uh, you need them both to operate properly in God. So that's what we're going to talk about today, how to balance and how to use knowledge and studying and discipline and character development to assist the anointing. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, uh, Prophet, would you like to go? You have anything to get started? Oh, praise the Lord. God bless you, each and every one of you out there. But yes, this is definitely a topic that definitely needs to be addressed as far as Studying the one that says study to show thyself approved a workman not needing, you know, but you have to study as well as flow in the anointing. Mm -hmm. You can be anointed to preach, but if you have no knowledge about what to preach about, yeah. you can be anointed all you want to, but you have no word, you don't mm -hmm. know scripture, you're just out there like a D student. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's exactly what you'll be, a D student, a D student for God, because that's what it's, it's, it's for. I know sometimes we get so caught up in when it comes to church and ministry, we get so caught up in, oh, I've been called and, oh, I've been anointed and, no, there's a word over my life and I want to do certain things. But now to complement that word, you have to now do your part for the fulfillment of prophecy. And that's just uh, across the board when it comes to whether it's a prophecy about your, your anointing and your ministry, or it's a prophecy about your life, there's still a part you have to play. There's still a work that you have to do. So if you get, you know, prophecy, for example, about having multiple streams of income or having businesses and being wealthy. Okay. Now you have to do your part as someone who, you know, you want to make sure your credit is good. You want to get some businesses incorporated. You have to do your part. So it's the same thing spiritually. If you get a word and you get told you're a prophet, you're a pastor, you're anointed, you're a dreamer, you're a seer, you're going to lead ministries. You're going to lead women. Okay. If that's the word that you've been given, now you have to marry the word with the work. Amen. Amen. You have to marry the word with the work. Otherwise, you're walking around with a prophecy and no direction. Amen. Very well said. Um, yes, because just like you said earlier, you can be anointed and have the word spoken of your life. But if you don't implement the things that need or those steps to attain that, you know, the Bible, you could be say, oh, God is going to bless you with a vehicle. 
Right. But if you have no driver's license, right, not even a permit, you haven't made the steps, the preparation to get it. What's good with having that vehicle if you can't operate it? Good. So it is in the natural. So it is in the spiritual. Now you have a word spoken of your life that one day you're going to be a pastor. You're going to be a prophet. You're going to be an evangelist. You have to study the word. You know, you got so much energy. Oh, my God, I could see you. I see you evangelizing and taking the world by storm. But you have no word. You don't know the first thing about evangelizing. So the next step is to study what is an evangelist? What is a prophet? What is a seer? What is a pastor? What are the requirements? To 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 be these things. Good word, sir. What is the requirements to be these things? There, I mean, when I was coming up, uh, <laughs> there wasn't that much stuff on, especially on the prophetic. Mm -hmm. You can't teach someone how to be a prophet. Um, I remember when I was, uh, yeah, I'm not even gonna go there, but <laughs> <laughs> being a prophetic. There was not that much manuscript out there mm -hmm. in order to teach you how to. There's no way to teach you how to prophesy. Matter of fact, there's something coming up that I'm trying to work on prophetic etiquette. Because sometimes some people get a prophetic word and they just want to boom, yell out in the middle of a service. I hear the Lord saying, thus says the Lord. Uh, it's not the time right now. And right. Then, you know, Right. Just because it's lawful doesn't mean it's expedient. It's not right for right now. Or, you know, well, when do you propose to prophesy to somebody? Well, God gave me what? That don't mean you're supposed to prophesy that to that individual right then and there. Maybe God is showing you something to pray about it. Mm -hmm. So it's all in learning different things. Just like in preaching the word, you know, you know, you got to study your craft. Yeah. Just with, in the regular world, you want to be an engineer, you got to go to school and study your yeah. craft. You know, there's so many schools available now. You just have to be directed to the right one um, where you can learn about your craft. Just like with college, you go from elementary to college, you study for whatever, whatever trade you want to take, whether it be welding, op. Uh, opticianary or whatever mm -hmm. you want to do, you know, truck driver, you still got to take a CDL. Yeah. Uh, an architect, you still have to go to school to learn the basic foundation of what it is that you need to go into. And yes, you can operate in that particular vein, mm -hmm. but only to a certain degree. Right. There's a limit. So what There's a limit be able to with, do. where you can go with that. Yeah. Because, okay, you're good with your hands at building things, but there's only a limit to where you can go with that. And I remember having a, uh, a conversation with one of my nephews in regards to schooling, you know, just educational schooling. Uh, okay, you're good with this, but you can only go so far with high school. You got to go to college and you don't like cold weather in New York. You like warm, sunny. You can go to florida california but you need that degree you need a right. degree to get into that warmer degree i used to tell them so i'm like how can you just do it from what you okay you went to a trade school here but that's just here now you can right. they're, they're offering you thirty thousand dollars a year at without the college experience or that degree but how much more can you demand or get while with a four year degree or a master's, now your 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 options are open even wider. That's good. You have a more vast option, just like with studying the word, and it goes for the same thing. If you can only preach on a second grade level, how right. are you going to go into the TJ arena? Do you even know protocol into even going into the pulpit? So there's always a step to learning things, you know, um, to to help elevate your ministry that's on your life. So you definitely have to, I believe, so much more that, you know, the second Timothy two and 15, because also when Paul was telling Timothy about this, to study, to show yourself approved that you can rightly divide the word, because if you go be back up one, I think it's verse 14. He, uh, where it says he keeps reminding them of these things 
warned them yes, before sir. God against quarreling about words. It is of no value and it only ruined those that listen. Because there's a lot of false teaching out there. A lot. There's a lot of false teaching. And I'm sure just like me coming up, you heard our forefathers say some things that now that you think about it, they were in error in what they said. Oh. But they, you know, they were completely kind of off. As you say, they were completely kind of off. But some of them did not have the educational experience. Right. So, you know, some might not have been past sixth grade, ninth grade, you know, and they preach by reading what they read, but they preached it, but without the knowledge behind it, you know, right. they didn't study, they don't have the Hebrew, the Greek, da, da, da. not saying that you need all of that. I mean, it does help. So you know what the the, the essence of a word means. So um, in that sense, you know, and because, like I said, because you had so much false teaching that was that was going on and that is still going on up to this day. To where as in, you know, you read something in the Bible and you kind of kind of take it out of context as far as like. Prophet, women, you went a little, your, your mic huh? kind of acts it up a little bit. You oh, OK. A little OK, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, as far as uh, some things where I said you may have read in the Bible, uh, especially. Oh, still can't hear me. Oh my yeah, God, I don't know what's given, going on. Yeah, you static, robotic. Oh wow, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't know why it's doing. Yeah, that. maybe the headphone or something. And I put fifty dollars headphones that better work like it's supposed to work. Can you hear me better now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're you giving me a little uh, robotic, but I I do agree with you. If maybe you want to try to address that for a few minutes, I do agree with everything you said. It was so so effective because even in real life there's only so far you can get on raw talent you know the raw talent is good but when someone is has a goal for greater the raw talent gets people to notice you and then after a while you must then put yourself under some direction so as to hone and fine tune your skills because if you don't you're going to end up in a space where all you have is talent and people with preparation and technique will pass you they will pass Definitely. you away, even if you have your, your real talent without proper technique. You know, you're never going to be excellent. You're never going to excel in the way that you're designed to excel. And you have this. And Paul, he, he did this before when he was talking to the old church, the new converters. He was telling them, he said, I'm sorry, it was Peter. And he was talking to the people and he said, the scripture says, y'all have a zeal, but not according to accurate knowledge. I mean, you have a good heart and a good passion and a good desire, and you're pushing to do it, and you want to do better, and you have the ability, and you have been gifted with the Holy Spirit to do better. But because the knowledge is not accurate, and because the knowledge is not right, you are now ineffective as you try to operate in ministry. The same way that Proverbs says, my people perish. Not for a lack of anointing, and not, not for a lack of the Holy Ghost, but for a lack of knowledge. And when you don't have the knowledge that you need to complement your anointing, you're out there as raw talent, which is good in the beginning. And this ties into what I was talking about last week with the responsibilities of the church and the church leaders. This is why you have certain people in place, um, because they are now qualified to see raw talent and groom it. So when you have an opportunity, like, you know, like Prophet said, and even like myself coming up, I didn't have a mentor. You know what I'm saying? I, I didn't have grooming. So it was it was me. It was the Bible. It was um, other prophets that I knew around me and apostles around me. It, it, it was Google. It was it was publications. And, it's, and I had to study my craft to to get better at it because hearing is just not enough. Hearing right. is just not enough. If hearing was enough, we wouldn't need prophets. Because mm. a, a lot of people hear, you know. So it's, whatever it is that you are called to do, whatever it is that you're anointed to do, it is imperative that you you seek out an education on it, so that you can operate with an understanding. And even a, a, a greater thing, with not just the knowledge. I was having a conversation with somebody just last night. It's so crazy the way God works. And to, to walk this walk effectively, not only do you have to master your anointing and your craft and your calling, you got to master yourself. You got to master yourself. <laughs> the hardest one. 
<laughs> and in mastering yourself, that takes time. It takes discipline. We're talking about character development, things that take time, the old you being broken and old habits going away. These are things that take training and time to, to change the way your mind works, to change the way you respond to things. Thank you, my assistant pastor is on. Yet there must be training. It is essential that you train not only your brain, but your spirit and your heart and your body to be in alignment to complement your anointing. Otherwise, you'll end up an anointed offense. You'll end up in an anointed offense. You'll, you'll be an anointed embarrassment because now you're anointed and you have knowledge, but you don't have character. Or now you have this and you have that, but you don't have the discipline. So now you don't have integrity and you don't have any of these things that you need to live this life and to walk this walk effectively with your anointing. You don't want to be an anointed mess. You don't want to be a preaching mess. You don't want to be a prophesying mess. And the only way to change those things is to be taught, is to be disciplined, is to be corrected, is to walk this walk. And in the beginning, you know, that's why it's imperative you get under somebody that you trust. Because you can't just walk in, hello, thinking, I heard from God, it's time for me to speak and I can go. And you, you're just an offense. And all of these things are a part of training. All of these things are a part of training. Yes, sister. Yes, I definitely agree. Um, not even so much someone that you trust, someone that the, you got to be, you got to pray. You got to yeah. pray and be led by God, you know, because it may not be somebody that you trust. It may not even be somebody that you know, per se, but it can be somebody that the Lord trusts you with and trusts right. you with them. They're equipped. They're equipped to handle one your attitude, two <laughs> your demeanor. Um, and they're equipped because there are some people like you know, some you may run over, or you may have a a a, a large spirit per se personality. But someone I has like to be that. Equipped. I'm gonna start using that. I like that. You have a large spirit. I like some <laughs> you know. So you have that where you have to have somebody that's equipped to be able to handle you because there's a lot of pastors out here with people in their ministry and because they see that anointing that's on your life and they want to you know not smother you but they they think that they can handle you but they can't handle you mm -hmm. because they, they they want to handle you because Oh, yeah, I could say that he's under me. Yeah, he got that fire, she has that fire. Yes, and sir. Because they're under me. That's when they go out, my name is gonna go out too. But if you're not equipped to handle that individual and to rein that individual in, right, it's gonna be a hot, like you said, a hot mess. And it's um, hot. as far as training, it's so important, imperative that we get training, you know, by qualified people, you know. Uh the mothers trained us, the, the, the fathers trained us, you know, when we were coming up, might not all been right. And of course, it's not always good, you know, because <laughs> some of them were very strict very. and very, very, very strict. But it helped groom us into who we are today. I didn't grow up in church. I was not a church baby. I didn't right. go to church until later on in life when I was hanging out in the clubs and stuff. And God started raining me in a little by little. And you know, he gave right. me a, and then and then I went back out there after that. You know, I remember I got saved at the age of 13, no, 12, about 10, 11, 12. Yeah, 11, 12. And I when I tell you I love God, I love the Lord. <laughs> I love the Lord. It wasn't nothing you could do. I wasn't out there talking about. Oh, repent again. No, I love God, but then I'm my you talk about God, my heart will fill up. I would be so swollen with God and everything. My mom and my aunt were like the two that really like they didn't push me, but I watched their lifestyle and I saw mm -hmm. how they carry themselves and others. Um, and I used to tell them about dreams I used to have and everything like that. Even prior to even realizing who God was, he started revealing himself to me before I even got saved. And I was like, well, who? I was like, auntie, um, I had a dream and this man came in the bedroom and I'll never forget. I write in the Amityville, Long Island. 
I had this dream. I saw this man come. I saw this man come into the bedroom. At first, I was scared, but then I, I, it, whatever the vibe he was giving off, it was like, okay, you don't have to be scared of me. And I, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, I'm, and I'm telling you, sis, it was like I was awake. Like I really think I was, I was awake, because I'm looking at the door and I'm looking around the room, and I remember pulling the covers over my eyes and then pulling it back down because I felt that I felt safe, and it was like this bright light. And he just stood there and looked at me, and I don't remember quite like smile. And I still remember I couldn't really see his face, but he was a caramel color, and he had locks. I didn't know nothing about locks back then. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> I was so and shout I, out I, to I, Team Red. Uh, like you know what? Hey, <laughs> I didn't know nothing about that. And um, take care. And I was just like, and I just felt safe and comfortable. And I don't really remember what he said to me, but I felt good afterwards. And then I was like, I told my aunt about it and my mom in the morning. It was like, what? What happened? And they knew. I didn't know. And then they were like, oh, wow, that's awesome. You know, you had a visitation. I was like, I don't know if it was an angel or God. I didn't know nothing about that. And what happened was I would start asking them questions about, like, who is this God? Who's Jesus? I said, who's Jesus? Because he said Jesus. That's what I remember. Jesus. I was like, who's Jesus? I'm like, who's that? What's that about? And then they started like talking to me a little bit, like in my where my mind can under handle it and understand. And eventually, you know, I said, I want to, I want to like to know this person. He made me feel good. I want to know who that is. And eventually it was like, okay, okay, okay. And you know, we started going to church and things like that. They were already in the church and stuff. But now I guess I started paying attention in church. Mm-hmm. And, and they then, were equipped to point you in the right direction. Right, right. Because right. they were equipped. And the funny thing was, I was asking them some questions that I should not be asking them at, at that age. They were like, whoa, wait a minute. So I remember when I was around junior high school, I was like, like, like I said, about, about 11, 12, because I wasn't quite, I wasn't even 13 yet. And I asked my mother to, I said, Mom, I said, I want to go to Bible school. She was like, what? She's like, I was like, yeah, I want to go to Bible school because she was already in Bible school. So I was like, I want to go. I was like, I want to learn more. She said, really? She said, no. She said, no. I'm not even going to lie to you. She said, no. I was like, but I want to learn. She said, "Uh, how are you going to learn and go to school? I said, it's at night, right? Yeah, but your bedtime is at 7.30. Bible class starts at 7.30. Well, I want to go. Well, the only, and my my pastor at that time, um, Bishop Alonzo Parrish, he was there that Sunday and um, I was telling him in front of her and she she spoke to her and said, well, why don't you let him go to Bethel Bible Institute? And she said, I'm a single mom, four boys. Where am I getting the money? I'm barely making it to pay for my college to go there. So I'm like, well, you know what he said? We will cover him. Wow. Yeah. She said, it's something. He has something. And they allow me to go. And only under the the, the concept of you you must maintain your grade point average in school. You if you start slipping in school, you're out of there. So I was like, okay, okay, I want to go. Okay, I'm gonna go. I did it. I was one of the top kids in the school. I was, it wasn't even that many kids in the school. It might have been like four of us in the whole when we graduated for evangelism evangelism degree. And I kept up my school work and I kept up my grades in school. It was rough. It was not easy, but I did learn, and it taught me and helped prepare me. I didn't know what it was, what I was getting prepared yeah. for. But I was I was learning about evangelism, how to win souls, how to how to, you know, write your little papers and things of that nature. And they were like, wow, this kid is really holding his own. I'm telling you, I got nothing less than the 85 in that class. I was like, hey. and the professor did not hold back whatsoever. He just gave it to me like he was group. No, I'm the only kid in the class. All adults. Same thing they were learning, same way he was talking to them. He didn't try to dumb down anything for me. Open your Bible, young man. Read. 
you can't pronounce the word, spell it. I'm like, okay. And he taught me, and I graduated with the rest of them by the time we finished and still maintain my GPA in school and everything else and graduated. And, you know, I, I found that later on after a little while, I kind of left the church world. You know, as we do when we get a little bit older, we kind of leave the church world and went out there and did my own thing. But it was still in me. But and your training all, never left you. My training never left me. And you know what? My training helped me when I went into the workforce. <laughs> It helped me. It does. It helped me a great deal because you still learn. Because even in the, you learned how to deal with people, right? And you learned how to speak with people, and right. know that everybody's not on your level, or even those that are above your level, you still know how to conduct yourself and how to win, how to win friends, not even souls. I was winning friends by just talking to them. So it helped me, you know. So, but um. That's why I believe training is yeah. very important. Get into a Bible school, a Bible believing school, so you can learn some things about your craft because it's very important. Because if you don't know your craft, what good are you? Not what's very. Good, what's good of knowing how to bake a cake and don't know how to, you know, you, you want to bake cake, but you don't know how. It's not, it's not going to help you. You can have all the pots and pans and all of that. But if you don't know how to bake the cake, you're not going to be able to bake a cake. And that's where a lot of us are sitting around with all the equipment and no knowledge. We have all this equipment to do all of these things. And God has, has set up. He's given us everything we need. He's already he's given us grace. He's given us mercy. He's given us the anointing. He's given us the Holy Ghost. He's given us leadership. Now we have to want to learn because you now can't fight the process of learning. And so many, so many times the, the most frustrating part is the process but the process is trying to teach you the process is trying to grow you and I always tell people with my with my current ministry where I am now this is not the same church I started with by the time I joined and got under leadership I, I'm at now I was already operating in the prophetic I was already hearing I was prophesying I knew the word I was just, but I always tell people my ministry and my leadership made me a better prophet because it made me a better person and it taught me how to be as a person. And I needed that. That was the part of my training I was missing. And that's why I was falling short of where I was supposed to be. Not because I didn't know scripture, not because I couldn't hear, but because my character hadn't been trained on mm -hmm. how to operate as a person. So because Clarissa never went through training and I put my knowledge through training and my anointing through training, I forgot to put myself through training. So in all of that, I was operating with all of this anointing and all of this power, and I'm going to put it in quotes because it's not really power right. if you can't carry you. And Amen. I had this and the ministry had to teach me how to be as a person and in making me a better person and in disciplining me as a better person, it made me a better prophet. And this is what God tries to do. He tries to, to do things and he tries to set us up where you realize no, hearing is the easy part. He hearing from God is the easy part. You know, the, the being anointed is, is the easy part. And you can open up and say, but can you get through the training of you? Mm. Can you get through the training of, of you, of letting that old you die? Because the old you can't operate with this anointing. So can you allow yourself and your character and your mind and your spirit to be trained in order to handle certain things? Or are you going to be sensitive your whole walk? Or are you going to be offended by everything? Are you are you going to walk away and shut down because you didn't like the way something was said to you? Or are you going to be, is this the person you're going to be all through ministry? Because if that's who you're going to be, you're not going to be effective. You, someone may let you preach every now and then. Somebody may let you prophesy and teach every now and then. But if you don't have the character following you into those open doors, you will find that they will soon be shut. And what would have been, it should have been a long path and a long road ended up becoming a dead end because you didn't finish your character training. 
because you didn't finish your character development, because you didn't finish your personal training. So you're dragging around all these old things. You're operating in a place of bitterness. You're operating in a place of offense. You're operating in a place of unforgiveness. You're operating in a place of inconsistency and immaturity. And you have all of these things in you. And in your mind, you're like, I'm anointed and I got it. And it's like, no, there's still some things on the inside. God is always more concerned with your heart. God is always more concerned with the inside. So now your heart is full of all these things. And you're like, but I study the word and I know the word and I preach the word. Yeah, but your heart. Because when you lay hands on people, you're laying hands from your spirit. When, you, when you're speaking and you're praying over people, you're pouring. Out, you know, so if all of that is not together, all you're doing is transferring your mess from you to somebody else. Right. And there's so thing, there's that part of the training as well. Well, there's the thing that I said. Your anointing and your gifting open doors for you. Mm -hmm. It's your character that keeps you inside yeah. those doors. You know? yeah. And a lot of what you were saying sometimes is not even so much the anointing because the anointing comes to break yokes. Right. The anointing comes to do these things. Some people are just gifted. They're just gifted to do what they do. And they just and each of us have a gift. Gift comes without repentance, but your gifting is it the gifting or the anointing that that attracts the people? Is it is is what is in operation at that particular time? And mm. and that's a whole different thing. Yeah. And now, as far as just we, since we're trying to stay on the topic of the um teaching, to, I mean, learning to show our own self approved. You know, you have to learn. And like like you said earlier, sit under someone. Like, shout out to my church, All of Joy Ministries, to incorporate under the Apostle Patricia and Wally Rogers. When I got there, she has a she has a Bible school, um, ITW in the Word Bible Institute, where you know she has, and it's from different people from different ministries that come there to be trained. She you know she she let the Lord lead her, and the Lord told her to open this school up to train the people so the people are being trained from different ministries coming over to be trained in whatever we're offering at that time the prophetic or revelation or just the, in the word itself and also along with that is you know at your home church we have um an elder what we call elders class not just bible study or sunday school we have where we meet like i think it's every third thursday of the month and right now we're doing it online on Zoom. And it's where those of us that believe we have a calling or you have a calling, you walk in office, you are required to be in this class because this is where you get your Christian foundation from. You learn ministry. It's ministry training. It's basically, that's what it is. The ministry training, teaching you how to do uh, everything that you could possibly do in ministry. From ushering all the way up to pastoring, you know, and everything in between, the deacon, the uh, junior deacon, you, you're learning all the different steps and the different um, qualifications you need and what you need to do to do it. And you're also learning the word and how it coincides with each other, how, how they work hand in hand, mm -hmm. because you, you can know all the word, but like you said, your character. So it teaches you about your character as well, because you're learning about what should I do if I'm placed in this situation? Right. How should I act? You know, we have a lot of messy people out there right now. Yes, sir. And which now people don't want to come to the church because right. of what they see in the church. Not knowing that, you know, they sing you, see you singing and shouting and carrying on. But when you outside of that, you're a hot mess. You know, they see you singing the words of the Lord one Sunday. They hear you cussing somebody out for stepping on your toes on Monday. Right. Sunday night. Oh, yeah. Sunday night. Or, or, <laughs> or, 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 or if I if I really want to be transparent, fighting in the church or fighting right after the choir is fighting outside while the service is going on inside. Woo, Jesus, I thank you for delivering. Thank you, God. Uh, <laughs> seen some things and some stuff. Yeah, I've seen some things in my little short span on this. I've seen some things. So that's definitely one of the things why I said, you know, 
this topic needs to really go out as far as like being trained. Find a church that's going to train you. Yeah. You not like everything that your leader says. Right. But it's there to help build you and to help mold you and shape you. Um, yes, you have the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. And they'll lead you and guide you all truth. And it's going to mm-hmm. lead you to a place where you need to be sit down and trained. Sit down. Sit down and be sit down. trained. Sit down. Lead you into all things. Amen. And there's, there's nothing wrong with that. We all go through a season. We all go through a part where we're in training where because you're currently a work in progress or because you're in training, you may find, you know, this is maybe time to be silent and be trained. You know, and there's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's the time where you can really sit with yourself and with God and with your leadership and be imparted in, you know, and have yourself tailored and have yourself uh, really, you know, if he is the master potter and we are the clay, we have to allow ourselves to be molded after him. We have to develop Jesus, not just the knowledge of what he did, but his heart. We need the heart of Jesus because Jesus was concerned with people. Yes, and if is. you don't know or like or understand people, you will not be effective in ministry because ministries are made up of people. Yes. And you may think that because you're an anointed or because you're called or because you're, you're operating with a level of knowledge and you have a level of doctrinal knowledge or theological knowledge, you still need a level of knowledge of people. You still need an ability to, to, to mentor, to counsel, to teach, because now what happens when you're in a place where someone else is raw talent and they need to be trained? When you're operating in a certain place and you have this title, you have this seat, the seat and the title don't just come with robes. They come with responsibilities. So now you have to be able to look at somebody else and go, can I train you? And if you have not finished your training and if you are still, you know, if you're still going down your way and guess what? We're all going to be a work in progress of the day we die. We're all we will continually be pressing toward the mark. We will continually be doing all of it. But you have to reach a point at a certain time in your walk where you should be able to pay it forward. You should be able to turn and see someone else that was where you were, which is where I was last night. I just had a and and I said, this girl sounds just like me 10 years ago. This girl sounds just like me five years ago. She sounds just like me. And I was able to go, okay, this is how you handle that situation. Because I know how you feel and I've been there and I understand. You have to be able to get past. She wasn't calling because she had a Bible question. She wasn't calling because she needed help with prayer. She was calling because she was having a moment with herself and a wrestle in her spirit and her character. So can you help someone with their character? Can you also go, okay, this, this is how this goes. And yeah, I can give you scriptures and we can pray that thing away. And that's great. But sometimes a good old conversation, sometimes yes. some good old counseling, sometimes some, some good old nurturing of people and some, um, what's the word when you like, when you turn over the soil, when you, when you want to work with people, you need that work to get you through this thing, because I promise you, if you walk this walk long enough, you are going to realize that, okay, this thing isn't always roses. This thing isn't always tulips and cotton candy. This thing isn't. So you have to be able to go in head first as you and not be moved. And you can't allow people to bring you out of yourself or resurrect what's supposed to be dead and take you out of character. And now you've blown an opportunity that you prepared for, that God anointed you for, because you didn't take the time to change yourself. Mm. Amen. And as you say, if he's a potter and we're the clay and there's some things within us that's not good, what does a potter do? He breaks it down and puts mm-hmm. it back on the wheel again and redo it all over again. And some of us have to be redone over again. A lot of us have yeah. to be redone over again. I'm always on the potter's wheel. He's always doing I've something been new. been broken several times. Yes, sir. Over and over and over again. <laughs> you know, it's like a flawed cup. How are you drinking out of a coffee cup that got a chip in it? It's all going to be bloop, 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 straight down. So mm-hmm. break it down and redo the cup again to make it perfect in his sight. Because I mean, we're right. just striving for perfection. But like you said, uh, 
we need to because you have to be able to divide the word. I mean, you have to be able to break down the word of God because you can read it. And we all can get three different understands and understanding of the what, what we're reading. So mm -hmm. we have to. That's why he said to study to show thyself, you know, not just not just other people, but you got to show yourself that, you know, you studied because you, if you if you don't study and you get up there to preach, you can preach off your experience. But what is the mm -hmm. word saying? What does the word say? You know, you can you can you can divide the word and even amongst, you know, my nephew, for example, great. I love this kid. He called me. He was stationed in Iraq or somewhere. And he called me during our talk and he's like, hey, Unc, um, I want to ask you something. I'm like, go ahead. What's up? Yeah. You know. He grew up in church and knowing God and stuff like that. But he said he wanted to read the Quran. He thought I was going to flip out because, you know, I'm Jesus all the way. I said, nah, man, go right on ahead. Go on and read it. Yes, go ahead sir. and read it and learn, learn what. First thing I said, I said, I don't have a problem with you reading it. I said, go on and read it and learn about their religion. One thing you do, though. I want you to cover yourself in prayer before you read it. Mm -hmm. Cover yourself in prayer, even in things that you read, books that you read, cover yourself in prayer before you read it. Ask the Holy Ghost, ask God to cover you under his precious blood that you're reading this. He knows why you're reading it to learn. I said, we are the only people that get stuck in our King James Bible, NIV right. Bible. We don't want to learn about nobody else. We can't have a conversation with nobody else. Right. So many of them can come up to us and question us about our Bible. And they know our book. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They know our book. So I said, why not learn their book? I said, right. you go right on ahead and learn what you need to learn because you never know who you may have to witness to while you're down there. I said, it can just be the Quran and the Bible talks about this, this virgin birth. Yeah. I said, Jesus is in the Quran. I said, and they talk about this virgin birth, but they think that Jesus is just a regular my dude. Yeah. You know, and you can say to them, don't you find it funny or don't you find it strange that this is the only woman that had a virgin birth? Mm -hmm. She wasn't touched by a man. You don't find it strange or why is this man how did he come about or or Everybody else, you know, they know we, they, they husband and wife knew each other. Mm -hmm. But this woman did not know a man. Isn't it? Don't you find that unusual? Why she didn't know a man, but yet she ended up pregnant and she birthed this 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 child? Isn't it something special about that child? Right. That he's just not a brother or a prophet. Isn't it something very unique about him? What is it so unique about him? And I said that could be your opening right there to convert a Muslim to because our Bible talks about him mm -hmm. and we call him Jesus. And our Bible says no man come up to the father unless you come through the son. He came and died for us. What does the Quran say about him? It, got, it must be something very special about him in order for him to be immaculately concept, conceived. So he was like, oh, he said, oh, I, I, I thought you was going to, you know, have a little, um, I said, no, man. I said, learn. Learn. I said, learn. Education is your friend. Exactly. Learn. I said, learn. I said, learn. Because I said, you can learn. So now when you have sit down and have a conversation with one of them, you know what you're talking about. Because mm -hmm. they sure know what our Bible says. They know what they're talking about. And more so, more than we do. Because we only pick it up once in a while. So, Learn. And that's why, honestly, in the world, a lot of times Christianity gets a bad rap and it gets mocked by other religions because they're like, they don't even know what they're talking about. And then you end up being this, having this stigma and the the, the stink of 
of ignorance on you. Yeah. Ignorance just meaning a lack of knowledge. Like you, knowledge. You don't know what you're talking about. And the other religions, if you ever speak to people in other religions, no, they do laugh because it seems like y'all just get up there and you talk and you're off and we know your book better than you and we know you're off and you don't even know you're off. So what we have to do is we're, su we're supposed to be the standard. The Bible right. says we're supposed we're supposed to be the standard as, as far as knowledge, as far as character, as far as spirit. We're supposed to be the standard because we're supposed to be the ones with the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be the ones following the life of Christ and following the model that he left for us. So when you have conversations with certain people, that's why when I have certain conversations, someone tell me, I was, um, oh, I want to go talk to someone on my job because he's a, uh, it was a, a friend of mine in ministry and he was like, I want your opinion. You know, I work with this guy who was a black Israelite. Like, you know, he's Hebrew, mm -hmm. he's into all mm -hmm. that. Yeah, and yeah. I really want to have a conversation with him. And his, and I said, you want me you want me to tell you the truth? Like, you want me to talk to you like as your friend? And they was like, yeah, I said, don't talk to that man. I said, I'm gonna tell you why you don't talk to that man because you are not no, skilled enough in this word to have a conversation with that man. Because if you start a conversation with him, he's gonna, gonna embarrass you, you. And you're gonna leave scratching your head and then you're gonna come back and you're gonna have a million other questions. So don't even don't even start that conversation because that's not a conversation you're qualified to have right now. And it becomes that thing of we have to. I'm someone, and this is just me personally and my personality. I, I love to learn. So this may be a struggle for other people. I'm yeah. a nerd. I want to read everything. I want to know everything. I want to that's that's my nature as a person. If you find just someone where that may not be you, it may be a bit more difficult for you to study. It may be a little bit more difficult for you to obtain that knowledge, but you still want to put forth that effort. You still want to do that. Even Jesus studied. Right, right. Even the word studied the Study. word from when he was a child. His parents left him and he was in the temple. Why? Because he understood I must first have a zeal for this word. I must have accurate knowledge. If I'm going to argue with these Pharisees, I got to know what I'm talking about. If I'm going to argue with these Sadducees, I got to know what I'm talking about. So you have we have to be prepared in and of ourselves to move forward. And that's why when he picked some of the disciples, some of these are very educated men. Right. When we look in the Bible, people who, who wrote books, Paul wrote most of the New Testament. That was a yeah. highly educated yeah. man. Right. And we have to put ourselves in, in a position where we no longer shun knowledge. Right. And I think it's something that's done not only as, as Christians, but sometimes as a people. We have right. a tendency to not embrace knowledge. You want to hide something from us? Hmm? You wanna? There was always a saying that said, if you want to hide something from us, where are you going to put it? In a book. All right. Put it in a book. If you want to hide something, put it in a book. Right. And <laughs> as you said, I remember the Lord gave me a dream one time, and I walked into this church, beautiful edifice, and I'm sitting there, right? And the preachers are preaching, everybody's all church. They even had a grand piano in there. Anyway, they're playing, <laughs> playing, and they're preaching. The preacher's up preaching now. And he said, um, Psalms 23. He said, Psalms 23. I am not your Lord. You shall always want. Huh? Yeah. yeah. The preacher is preaching. And you all no, he said, I am I am the Lord your God, and you shall always want. He was like, he was just flipping it backwards. And I'm sitting, and the people are going, Yeah, amen, hallelujah. And he's preaching the 23rd Psalms, and he's preaching it the total opposite of whatever it's saying. And I'm sitting there with this puzzled look on my face, and I said, God, what is he doing? What's why are they saying? And the Holy Spirit said, just be quiet. Because I'm ready to stand up and be like, what are you talking about? He said, mm -hmm. be quiet. Settle yourself. He said, look around. And I began to look around this huge church. I'm looking around. And sis, when I tell you nobody had a Bible, ah. nobody had a Bible out. Mm. Nobody had a Bible. He said, what do you see? I see nobody with a Bible. He said, okay, then. 
And then he told me to proceed to do some other stuff and rebuke that spirit. Wow. That was there. And that was that. I was like, wow. And it says, how can you write it? What word of truth are you dividing? Yeah. Because there's so much false doctrine out there. And let back up a little bit. Thank you, Holy Ghost, to what you said earlier about, you know, learning and stuff like that and books. I said, you got books, you got tapes, you got every, every venue of, of, of learning material out there. If you're not a reader, get it on, listen on, to on, it. on, on, listen to it, right, listen to it. Let it play while you're sleeping because it'll seep into your spirit. Mm -hmm. Just like you'll wake up, I nicely leave the TV on and commercials come on and all of a sudden I wake up with that tune in my head or whatever. It's, it's playing while I'm sleeping, but it's still going being downloaded into my spirit. So yeah. I wake up with it in, in me. So that's one another thing. But same thing. Maybe play the, play, play, the, play the Bible while you're sleeping before you get ready to go to bed and allow it to go into your spirit, man. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as studying, but you're going to get some word in you, which will hopefully right. spark something in you so that even if you do hear somebody saying something that's incorrect, you can say no, or you can go yeah. look it up real quick and be like, no, that don't sound right, and look it up for yourself, which will help spark your way of knowing the word or getting the word in you. And now, what word are you getting into? How do you write to divide the word of God? Right. That's the thing now, how do you do it? You may have to get a commentary and different things if when you get to that level. You might have to get I used to always when I used to work with the young people, um, still do, uh, get them the, the teen Bible, the message Bible, where they right. can actually the life application for a teenager Bible, where they can yeah. kind of understand it on their level so that they can take it in their spirit and be like, oh, okay, and correlate it with the with what's going on in their life and how to apply yeah. the word and break and the word is broken down to their level where they can understand it besides those vowels, these and everything else. Cause they used to always get me on that. So I take my little hard earned money and be like, all right, here's the Bible. And then so much, <laughs> the man in the bookstore was like, oh, you come to get some more Bible for your kids, huh? I was like, yeah. He was like, okay, I got a whole supply downstairs waiting for you. And he's like, okay, here you go. And I hand them out to them. And they were like, oh, now I understand what just what was being said or anything of that nature. Even the ones that didn't go to church and they may come into church once in a while and hear the word, they'll go home and read it or they'll call me and ask me to br break down the word for them. Right. So now we're breaking down the word. We're 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 doing Bible study now. Um, you know, we're dividing the word. Well, what does it mean? You know, the word of truth, dividing the word of truth. The word of God is the truth. And this is what will make you free. So uh, you know, um, I know what like is it Ephesians 1 and 13. Uh, where it said, what does it say again? I think it says something like, in whom ye also trusted after ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. That's it, yes. And whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit for of, of promise. Like, okay, well, what does it mean? I'm like, Tom, what does that mean? I'm like, oh, my God, help me, Jesus, Lord Jesus, help me with these people because they're coming at you crazy. So I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, this is the truth. This is the word of God. It's the truth. Well, who, who said it's true? I said, you have to study because there's a different lot. There's a whole bunch of truth, truth out there. And you have to know for yourself. And this word is something that you have to believe without a shadow of a doubt. This is what you're going to stand on when all right. else fails. You're going to stand right. on this word of God, just like the Buddhists. They're going to stand on theirs. You have to have a stand stance also right. and something that you stand on, because if you don't have nothing to stand on, you're going to fall for everything. And that's right. one of the that's one of the biggest parts. It's one of the biggest points. If you don't have enough training and knowledge for yourself, you can be moved. The James talks about being moved and thrown about by any wind of doctrine, and you can just yeah. be thrown about. Someone can tell you something that is completely wrong, and you will accept it because you have not taken the word in for yourself. You have not trained your, your, your mind and accumulated the knowledge and the accurate knowledge for yourself. And one thing about that scripture, the, the rightly dividing the word of truth, that's actually the theme scripture for 
what we do with iron sharpens iron. And the way I always took it is the fact that he says rightly divide the word of truth in my mind, I immediately hear that means there's a wrong way to do it. Whenever you say do it the right way, that means there is a wrong way because there are certain things that it doesn't matter how you do it, it's going to be fine. But when it comes to this, no, there is a rightly way that it needs to be divided because if you don't do it right, it will be wrong. If it's not right, it's left. You know what I'm saying? So it's that thing of get into that place. And I like how you brought that up. It's 2021. This is the age of information. Yes. This is the age of information. We have access to so much information. We have access to, to books and to videos and to other teachings and to schools. And a lot of it is free. Yes. Some things I pay free. for. I don't pay for a lot of things. I don't pay for a lot of things. I, I, I'll find a way and I'll work that thing out. But very rarely do I actually pay for something. If you have it, and you have that desire and your goal is to accumulate knowledge and to train yourself, whatever it may be, there's books out there. If you're a prayer warrior, there's books out there. If you're a prophet, there's books out there. If you're an evangelist, there's books out there. If you want a pastor, there's books out there. If you just want a mentor and spiritual counsel, there's books out there. Whatever it is that you are called and anointed to do, and anointing is an ability. It means he's equipped you in yourself to do it. Now you just have to accomplish reach out and find those things that are there that can help you complement it and not only read the books but you need a teacher absolutely you need a teacher because you could read it and not get an understanding right like, well i have a bible why do i need a preacher because you don't why understand do pastor because you don't understand how you how are you a novice going to read the word of God mm -hmm. with no understanding. Yes, the Holy Ghost is going to lead you and guide you. He's going to guide you to a teacher. What? <laughs> Come on now. He's going to guide you to a <laughs> teacher, that, to a teacher. Can, that can help you understand what it is that you're reading because you're going to read it, like you said earlier, there's a way of rightly dividing the word. You're going to read it and take it the wrong way. Yeah, And you're going to run with that and you're going to go out there and you're going to make a fool of yourself. Because you have not rightly divided the word of God. You read it and you took it as face value, but it's more to it than just that face value, what it says. You know, you're gonna tell me that, oh, a woman can't come to church without her head being covered, or oh, gosh. Or, or, or 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 uh, you know, no lipstick, no makeup, none of that. She, they like, wasn't letting us do dreads years ago in church. Oh my god, oh my god. Oh my God! I, 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 not, I, shut not up, the home. demonic dreadlocks. <laughs> shut up, Tom. Shut up, because you know I still get a little <laughs> flack every now and then. When when they see me, they be like, "It's one." I remember one guy said, "It's a shame for a man to have long hair." It's in the word. Oh really? Okay. Well, I guess Samson. I said maybe that's why Delilah cut Samson's off. Okay. I guess that's why Jesus didn't have, you know, did he have here? Oh, well, I guess. It, I said, if it was all right for Jesus to have it, I'll have it too. It, that was it. I said, wow. That's it. But you can say that because you've accumulated knowledge. Yes. If you don't accumulate knowledge, people could talk to you all kinds of crazy and you just amen and stuff. And you don't even know what you're agreeing to. Exactly. And that's what I was, another thing I was, I said, you have to learn some. you have to learn what words mean. You have to learn what words mean. What does amen mean? It's an right. agreement. You know, what are some of these words that you're, that's why, you know, and I said we lost a lot, uh, some of the translation between the Bibles are, um, some of the uh, the meaning is lost in translation between some of the Bibles. Yeah. So now that's why you have to get a little bit more in depth. But that's when time goes on. Get the basic first. Then get the fundamental on. basics, yes. Right, then move on. I'm teaching my little five year old, sorry, six, before he come in here and beat me up. Uh, the word of God. And, you know, and we have, we, we're training them from little uh, how to uh, recite uh, what they call scripture showers. God, where we yeah. Scripture showers. You know, so they do scripture showers 
and they'll get a little dollar and oh my god they're ecstatic over getting that little dollar because they can go to the store and get what they want to get um so it helps train them and he's grasping the word and i got him a bible you know the little kitty bible where he can say it in his own language but this kid can actually read the king james bible and then he'll ask me a question and um have to teach him you know like ye what's ye ye is just you that's all he's like oh well why didn't they just say you I'm like okay you know but he's learning and some things like you know, he'll come out of nowhere with a scripture verse and just say it at the right appropriate time. And, you know, and even kids these days, like I remember my mom said she took him to the grocery store one time and he was in the shopping cart. You know, a little, he was like maybe like two or three, about three. She had him in the shopping cart and there was a man standing behind her. And he had, sometimes he get this, my son get this intense look in his face. And He's just staring at the man and he just said, are you a grandfather to the man? And my mom said the man looked like he might have been in his 40s. So, you know, it wasn't really like you all grayed up and everything like that. Didn't look like that. And the, like the man was ignoring him. He just looked at him and he said, are you a grandfather? And the man ignored him again. He said, I said, are you a grandfather? And that, that look that day you just gave, the man looked at my mother like that, like, this little boy talking to me? And, yeah, he's talking to you, sir. Um, and the man, you know, said, well, um, no, not yet, but my daughter is pregnant and dude any day now. He said, okay, okay. Yeah, it's a little boy, right? And the man gave that look again and was like, who is this little kid? He said, yes, we just found out it's a boy. And that was it. I don't know where. So you see these things in these kids and just, you know, and things that spark their, 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 their knowledge, you just got to start feeding it to them. Mm -hmm. So I start teaching them little things about the prophetic. You know, I see he likes to put things together with his hands and, you know, build little things. So I'm showing him little things about engineering. Like, OK, I give him some trains, get him some blocks, you know, whichever way it seems to be going with him. Even if it's just for that moment or that week, at least you starting to impart into them. And I'm saying that as in such you, you do with your children leaders need to do with their children in the church you see little things that are sparked inside of your children your flock you now have to feed them yeah you, you nurture that. somebody you nurture it exactly you nurture it and you may have to encourage them like okay i see you you know yeah you really need to go to class um take a class get them the material point them in the direction to get the material that they need to get into that they need to advance themselves you know you got evangelists okay she has the evangelical call on her life get her some material let's see what she's going to do with it you know you could lead the horse to the water but you can't make them drink it mm -hmm. but you can you can give it to them so you can make them thirsty that there you go. That's Dr. Khan, you said. Yeah. Dr. Jeffrey Khan. You said Dr. Jeffrey Khan. You lead them off the water, you can't make them drink, but you can't make them thirsty. You can make them thirsty. I gotta ask him how you do that. Feed them salt, Jeffrey Khan. Is. That's what you're gonna do. Feed them salt, make them a little thirsty. All right, sir. I gotta talk to you about that one right there. I gotta <laughs> learn that one. I don't know that one yet. Make them thirsty. But like you said, rightly divide in the word of God. You have to study yeah. to show yourself approved. Because if you don't, and it's not only showing the people, but it also shows you Yeah, God. it's not about making a display of yourself. Right. It's mm -hmm. about showing God, like, look, God, yes, I'm studying your word. I'm, I'm learning your word so that I can help build this kingdom, so I can yeah. help win souls for you, so that I'm showing you that I'm studying the word, because when he wants to open a door for you, you have to be prepared. And basically, that's all it is. Studying is just preparing yourself so when God opens the door for you, that you can actually walk through the door that God opened. God got great things for you and so much, so much things in store for you. 
but you're not prepared for it. Yeah. You're not prepared for it. You haven't studied. You haven't studied. You haven't done your research. You haven't done anything. You just yeah. took what it is that you have this, 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 this great anointing or gifting on your life. Because that's what it is. It's gifting on your life. Mm -hmm. Not the anointing. Because the anointing comes after you go through some things. Right. So you're gifted to preach. You got the gift of gab. You got a gift. You got a gift. You have a gift. You have the gift of healing. You have the gift of deliverance. You have the gift. But you got to go through some things to get the anointing. And if, if you learn early in life that the anointing costs, it costs you some time. The anointing costs you friendship. The anointing costs you some busted up sleepless nights. The anointing is going to cause you to cry. I remember when I was younger and the Lord started like pulling me back to church after I left. I ran into uh oh slipping my mind. Bethel, um, Apostle, I'm sorry, Prophetess Juanita Bynum. It was actually John Boy, uh, Apostle Boy's church on Linden Boulevard. And I went in there, you know, one Sunday, I just, uh, let me go. All right, Lord. And I went up there and she just saw me in the passageway. And she said, young man, she's a little I was, young man, little boy, whatever. She just said, when they, and that was before she became all this wonderful name. Um, she said, when they, when people come up to you and say, oh my God, that you're so anointed, just start crying. I'm a teenager. I'm like, what? Just start crying. I didn't. And that's what she said to me. She said, when they come up to you and say how anointed you are, just start crying. When people come up to you and keep telling you how anointed you are, just start crying. And I did not understand it. And I was just like, okay, who this lady at in my face like this? And I just went about my business. It wasn't until years later that I realized what she was saying that because you're going to when they start telling you how anointed you are, that means I see this anointing on you, this great anointing on you. That means you're going to go through some things. You're going to go through some serious stuff that's going to bring the anointing. Because like my pastor always says, to use the example of the olive, the crushing, the oil, the anointing. You got to crush the olive to get the oil out of it. You got to get beaten down to get the oil out of it, to get that anointing. That means you have to go through some really rough stuff in your life to get that to get that oil or that anointing on your life you're gifted to preach yes but the anointing is what makes a difference and you can win souls preaching i remember my old pastor he said he said you want to hear one of, he said y'all think i can preach hear my brother preach and he ain't saved mm. he ain't saved he said but he can preach He'll preach me under the table. He said, that man just gifted to preach. But he's not saved. I said, wow. And I said, okay, okay. He said, but it's the anointing that makes a difference. And once you learn that you are, because we, we're all gifted. But once you start to cultivate that gift, mm -hmm. learn what it needs to make your gift greater. Whatever God placed inside of you, Learn what it is to make it greater. And that's the crazy. Oh my yo, you just messed me. That just messed me up right there. This this whole thing just messed me up because it's telling me in June, we we celebrate men's month in June at my church, All the Joy Ministries, 1278 Rogers Street, um, Rogers Place. Uh we're doing the men are in charge and we're doing the conference, the just a service. And the Lord gave me. The, the 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 theme i'm a vessel that carries his glory and i'm like so this is like you can have all this inside these gifting inside of you but what are you going to do to help cultivate the gift what are you going to yeah. do to help make the gift greater and the only way to do that is to educate yourself about the gift that's inside of you or the gifts the plural gifts so you got to get the books learn to read the word of God. You're an evangelist. Learn what it is to be an evangelist. Learn what it is. You're a prophet. 
Thank God now you have so many books about the prophetic. Mm -hmm. You can learn about the prophetic. Can't teach you to prophesy, but you can learn about it. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to pass, you, you, you feel God is calling you to pastor one day? Learn about it. Learn how to do a, 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 a how to do communion and communion and how to do you know marriages and all this other stuff. Learn about it. Like you said earlier, there's so such a vast way of getting information. It's to the you age now. of information. Amen. Amen. Yeah, everything is everything's available. At a click of the computer. That's what it's there for. Thank you so much, Prophet. See, I think Amen. I knew you was the right one for me to call on this. The <laughs> Lord directs me very well. Thank, thank you thank so you. much um, thank for, for joining me tonight, everybody. Thank you for Pastor and Prophet Anthony Johnson. Uh, I want to thank everyone who was out tonight. And our, our, our whole goal of Iron Sharpens Iron, our whole goal of tonight is to always create a dialogue and get people to see things differently and see that God is bigger. He's bigger. Whatever you think he is, he's bigger. And his plans for your life, he has great plans for your life. And everybody on, I thank you, Assistant Pastor Renee. I thank you, my Assistant Pastor. Um, assistant Pastor in New York, Han, if I see you, brother, thank you so much. Our Sister Jackson, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, next week, since we were talking about something today, but I'm going to do next week because I'm going to do uh, a little special on study next week. And I'm going to get into... Uh, different ways and methods and things that can help you with your studying to improve whatever it is you want to improve. But that's what we're here for. We're here to help each other. Iron sharpens iron means I help you and you help me. Because just because I'm on this side of the camera doesn't mean I have all the answers. Amen. Amen. So that's that's what Amen. this is about. Um, I thank you all for coming. Um, if you you know you were blessed by the word and you want to sow a seed, uh, please feel free to do so. The cash app is dollar sign manifest. CLT is dollar sign M A N I F E S T C L T. Uh, if you're in agreement and you want to sow a seed in agreement with the word, or if you feel there's another level of your anointing that you would like to activate with knowledge and you want to sow into that word, give give your give your seed a name. Put your yeah. offering, put your seed on assignment. If if you're going to sow into it, give it an assignment to grow something in you because that's what makes it see. Thank you so much. Oh my God, Mother Rollins, thank you so much. So good to see you. So good to hear from you. And that's where we're at tonight. We're going to close out tonight and I'll see you all next week. Same time, same place. Uh, Manifestation Ministries are Iron Sharpens Iron next week, Monday at 7 p.m. Once again, thank you so much, brother. I appreciate oh, you I for, for you. being available and just being who you are. And I thank you all tonight and you all have a great night. Have a great week and stay sharp. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for having me.